My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. And these are the PM services for Sunday, May the 30th. We'll be singing several songs from Songs of Faith and Praise. We will observe the Lord's Supper, and I will deliver a message, hopefully, that will be enlightening and edifying to each one of us. So if you have your songbooks at hand, if you would turn them to number 406, 406. <clears throat> I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, dear Lord, close to Thee. Just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Death close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Through this world of toil and snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my birth shares none but thee dear Lord none but thee just a closer walk with thee granted Jesus is my plea daily walking to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is o'er, time for me will be no Safely o'er to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with me. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Day King close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Four eighty eight. Four hundred and eighty eight. Let's sing verses one and four to this song. One and four. Into the heart of Jesus, deeper and deeper I go, seeking to know the reason why he should love me so. Why he should stoop to lift me 
up from the miry clay, saving my soul, making me whole, though I had wandered away. Into the joy of Jesus, deeper and deeper I go, rising with soul in raptured, far from the world below, joy in the place of sorrow, peace in the midst of pain. Jesus will give, Jesus will give, He will uphold and sustain. 579. We'll sing this song to prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper. 579. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer, in Him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. On the first day of the week, we are instructed to uh, gather together and break bread uh, this breaking of the bread is considered to be the partaking of the Lord's Supper. The fact that uh, Jesus is part of God's uh, wonderful, uh, amazing plan uh, knew that this would happen. He knew that uh, one day he would be the perfect, perfect sacrifice and uh, he willingly went to the cross uh, so that our sins might be forgiven. Uh, just the magnitude of that sacrifice is something that uh, it's really difficult for us to uh, fathom in our, uh, our lives. And uh, it's, it's one that uh, amazes us all, and it's one that lifts us, I hope, to greater heights and so that when we gather about the Lord's table, we will be lifted up. We will realize the purpose behind Jesus' sacrifice, that we will understand uh, the magnitude of his love for each one of us, the magnitude of God's love, that he sent his only begotten son to us, and that uh, this son would die a, a horrible and horrible death. So as we gather about the Lord's table, let's keep all of these things in our minds and treasure them in our hearts to uh, make this uh, service to the Lord more impactful to us and make it a key point of our worship service always. Let's pray for the bread. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to give up his body in our stead, that he was willing to be nailed to the cross, uh, his body broken in our stead. We just uh, thank you, dear God, for uh, doing this for us. And we thank your son for the willingness to sacrifice himself. As we partake of this bread, we think of his body that he gave up for us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. <clears throat> the life-flowing, uh, important 
issue within our body is called blood and it carries things to our body without it uh, we just uh, can't exist and we understand that uh, Jesus was willing to shed his blood and that blood uh, in its magnificence is the blood that washes away our sins and so that uh, when we partake of this fruit of the vine, I pray that we will do so in realization that it is through the blood of Jesus that grace comes upon us and that our sins can be forgiven. Let's pray for the cup. Our God and Heavenly Father, we just uh, come before your presence in awe of the plan that you had for us. But we know that plans are just plans until they were put into action and we're so grateful that uh, this action took place we're sorrowful that jesus shed his blood but we're uh, we're just so joyful that what that blood did for each one of us as we partake help us to remember the power that is in the blood we pray this in jesus most holy name amen Also on the first day of the week, we are instructed to lay by in store that which we have prospered. Uh, we are prosperous people. And uh, when we give back to the Lord, we give back uh, what is the Lord's. Because when we leave this earth, uh, nothing that we have, none of the goods that we have will go with us. Uh, we give thee but thy own, dear God. And we pray that the monies that are given will be used so that uh, more souls may come to know you and your son. Let's pray for the giving. Our Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that uh, we've been blessed enough to have the ability to give. Help us to give with an open heart. Uh, help us to give with an open mind and help us to give with an open pocket. Bless us in our giving. Help us to return to you that which is yours and help it be used to further your kingdom here on earth. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And the song before the lesson, and you'll see why as you, as we break the lesson down this evening, is number 479. 479 Peace, perfect peace In this dark world of sin The blood of Jesus whispers peace with them. Peace, perfect peace, by thronging duties pressed to do. Jesus, Jesus called 
Wonderful. Thank you for singing with us. And I hope the Lord was praised. I know that I was lifted up by the singing of these songs. Uh, you may have noticed a theme, a uh, recurring theme uh, through the songs. And the recurring theme is peace. If you were there uh, for the uh, AM lesson this morning, you know that uh, the title of our lesson this evening is called Obtaining Peace. Obtaining Peace. Every day in this world, uh, the world shouts out that we have warfare of some kind rather than peace. It seems like serial killings have become the norm rather than the oddity. And we see where uh, people uh, wantonly take the lives of others as if those lives just uh, are kind of meaningless. And so the news is always filled with this. We, we are just uh, finishing the, the hostilities between Hamas and Israel, and hopefully there will be a peace, and it looks like there's a peace that is being brokered at the present time. If, even if we could get nations to be at peace with one another, um, that really has not given the best peace that we could possibly have. The uh, Greek philosopher Epictetus, uh, Epictetus uh, lived somewhere between 50 and 135 AD, so he's almost a uh, a contemporary of the apostles, and he lived within the first century. He was what was called a Stoic philosopher, and so much of his teachings and much of his philosophy revolved around peace. And uh, I find some words of his to be uh, striking to me. And uh, I'll read them because I didn't uh, commit them to memory, although I read them over and over again. He wrote this. Now, be reminded, even though, uh, even though uh, uh, Epictetus was a Greek, he was living in the Roman Empire. And so the nation that he's talking about is Rome. Uh, he said this. While the emperor may give peace from war on land and sea, he is unable to give peace from passion, grief, and envy. He cannot give peace of the heart for which man yearns more than even outward peace. And so when we think of peace as uh, being a world free from hostilities between nations or factions, uh, Epictetus uh, cuts to the core of things. And he says real peace is the peace that is within the individual. I would contend that all of these serial killings that we see are the result of people who don't have peace within their own lives. And uh, the, the Greek philosopher said the, the, the peace from passion, peace from grief, peace from envy. I would state almost unequivocally, in my estimation, the desire for peace is the number one desire in the hearts of all. Even though it is desired so that uh, so much, and it, is, it seems to be so elusive that few people in the world truly have it today. It is so elusive because worldly people 
seek peace the way the world offers peace. Now, interestingly enough, with uh, death at hand, Jesus, in the last night that he existed, spent time with his apostles before he was crucified. Jesus knew what his fate was to be. And I don't know about you, but if I knew this was my fate, I probably wouldn't state the words that Jesus stated. But if we turn to John chapter 14 and verse 27, Jesus stated these words, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Isn't that, isn't that unique? How could he give them peace when he knew that his ghastly, grotesque death was just hours in front of him, that he would be arrested that night and crucified the next day. And so he actually, in the statement, answered the question that I just posed. He was not going to give peace the way the world thinks about what peace is. Satan has deceived the world. He's deceived the world that when he says, you're at peace when you have everything in your life that you need, when you have the pleasures of sin, when you have an abundance of uh, money, when materialism just is, is just uh, popping out of you almost, there's peace. And he instills that in the world, and it is a worldly view. Even to the point of people are at peace, worldly-wise, when they have obtained power over others, then they are at peace within themselves. Deep within the, the inside of people. People know that those things do not offer peace. The rich young ruler had everything. He did things that he was supposed to do, but money meant so much to him that he could not have the peace that passes understanding of a relationship with God through Jesus Christ because his wealth stood in his way. Saint, Satan had tainted his soul and said, you can't give that money up. <clears throat> that money is, is much, much too important. Mm. You can never have real peace in your life if this money uh, is not there. Unfortunately, and often too late, those who thought they had peace find, found out that they did not have true peace. Like the man who had the, the bumper crop of harvest, and he had so much that he said, let me build bigger barns because my harvest is so great. I will have this harvest and I will be able to fill it up. It, it was like a bank account. It was just teeming. And, and he, he was able to fill these new barns up. And then Jesus said to him, you know what? Your soul will be required of you tonight. In essence, what Jesus was saying, what good will all those goods do? What good will those bigger barns be? Because you're going to die. And what's going to happen to it? 
the bottom line here is, is that God wants us to have peace. One evidence of this is that peace is a major theme throughout our Bibles, especially in the New Testament, just as a, uh, uh, a trivial thing. There is only one book in the New Testament, and that is 1 John, in which the word peace does not appear. And so if you go through every New Testament book, only 1 John does not have the word peace in it. One cannot have peace in his life, and especially peace with others around him until that person has peace within themselves. Now, where am I going with this? Since peace is so important, where do we find it? Well, the following instructions are there from the pen of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 5, verse 25 and 5, verse 1. When he said, uh, Christ was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you get that? Justified, justified by faith. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Our sin removed from our souls, but Christ paid our debt so that we can have peace again. Our sins wanted to drag us down, but through the crucifixion, the death, the burial, and resurrection, Jesus was able to take those sins and cancel them out. They could be removed from our souls because Jesus paid the debt that we could not pay. Now, there is a little catch to this. It says that we're being justified by faith, we have peace. But I'm here to tell you that it's not faith alone. There is more than faith. Before the sinner can truly have peace, he must have faith in what Jesus Christ has, get this, has done for him, has done for us. Our faith rests upon Jesus' actions. Jesus had to physically die that horrible death. Jesus had to do that so that our faith can be carried out. And just as simply believing in what Jesus did will not bring peace, James, the brother of Jesus, who wrote the epistle of James, explains it this way. Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Jesus had this faith in his father to bring about what his father wanted to happen, but Jesus had to do it. He had to do the work. He had to give himself up for the world. And so, uh, for one to have a saving faith, one's faith must lead that person into action. Now, we're going to go back to the day of Pentecost for just a moment. Um, when the people on the day of Pentecost were looking for peace in their hearts, Peter told them, 
and, and, and let them know what had really happened. In Acts chapter 2, verse 36, he said, Know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. Talking about Jesus. This Jesus whom you crucified. And they knew that. They knew that they were the ones responsible responsible for Jesus' crucifixion. With this statement, Peter said um, that you have to believe in Jesus as Lord and believe in Jesus as the Christ. And when they were convicted of this truth, it, it would seem like in unison they said, brethren, talking to the apostles, what shall we do? All right, you ready for this? Because this is very, very important to the structure of our faith. If faith alone could save, all right? If faith alone could save, this would have been the perfect time for Peter to say, there's nothing for you to do. Your faith will save you. Since you believed, you're going to go to heaven. That's all there is. But Peter didn't say that in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. When they said, what do we do? What shall we do? He didn't say just believe. He didn't say just have faith. He said, you've got to do something. He said, repent, each one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. How did they respond? We know how 3,000 of them responded. 3,000 of them said, that's it. 3,000 of them believed the words of the Holy Spirit-inspired Apostle Peter when he said, it's just not enough to have faith. You have to put your faith into action. You have to repent. That's an action. You have to confess Jesus as the Son of God. That's an action. And you have to be baptized for the remission of your sins. That's an action. As James would put it, that's a work. That work is added to your faith. Your faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God is put into action by your response to it. You know, it's like the, the, the two sons that the man said, go out and do this work for me. And one of the sons said he wouldn't, but after he thought about it a while, he went out and go ahead and, and he did what his father said for him to do. The other son says, oh, yeah, I'll do it, Dad. And as soon as he went out, he said, oh, Dad, Dad, no, I'm not going to do it. And when asked who did right, with one accord, everybody said, the son who did what the father told him to do. Well, Peter told those people on the day of Pentecost, take your faith and put it into action. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. And that day, 3,000 souls were added. Therefore, you ready? On that day, they were justified by faith and had peace with God. And isn't this the perfect time as we finish this lesson up this evening to ask the question, do we all have peace with God? Is this peace based on what some man told you? or what you find in the scriptures, or what we have studied about and talked about this evening. Jesus wants us to have peace. And the peace comes from taking our faith 
that God had this plan all the while for us. And he put this plan into action by sending Jesus to earth and by Jesus dying for our sins. And so on the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached to those people, he could say, Jesus put his faith in God into action by being crucified. You must put your faith in Jesus Christ into action by obeying Jesus into repentance, confession, and baptism. And so the invitation is open to you this evening. If you haven't accepted Jesus into your life, uh, you are one step away. You must repent. You must confess Jesus as the Son of God and be baptized for the remission of your sins. If you have not done so and you're viewing this uh, via YouTube, uh, we are at your call. You have but to, to, to get in touch with any of us here at the Northfield Church, and we will be there for you to take you down that step into baptism. I pray that uh, each of us will understand how important it is to have peace in our life. And peace in our life only happens when we are at peace within. And that peace within comes through the knowledge that we are in Jesus Christ. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this time that we've had together to sing praises to your name, to observe the Lord's Supper, and to hear a message uh, that uh, hopefully will impact our lives just a little bit. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, that we might truly obtain peace, and we know that we can only obtain peace through a, uh, this wonderful belief that Jesus Christ is your Son, that he died for our sins and rose again on the third day, and that we must be a part of him. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, through this evening. Help us to uh, just, uh, just be at, at peace with ourselves because of our powerful relationship with you. I ask that you would indeed forgive us of our sins Help us to resist the temptations that there are about us and know that the spirit that you gave to us, the indwell in us, will help us to resist those sins. Be with us through the evening. Help us to look forward to the next time that we can meet again. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I pray that all of you will be safe and may God bless you all. One thing I ask of the Lord.